to me, it's it feels like the living earth is sending a, it feels like a signal. It feels like this is a precursor. This doesn't feel like the end. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, a lot of people are freaking out, I think, and having this sense that this is a, somehow the end of the world or something. Um, I don't get that sense from it. I get this sense that the earth that, that with large-scale complex societies like ours, that it's inevitable that we would have pandemics, that we would have things like this. This is a check or something. This is some kind of um, necessary thing. And, and I don't mean to sound cynical or I don't mean to sound um, uh, dismissive of suffering and what's happening right now, um, but it does give me this feeling that this is this was always going to happen it was just a matter of when and i i guess i want to get your sense of that i mean do you get this sense that gaia is i don't know maybe giving us a little a taste of what's coming or or maybe trying to give us a little tap on the shoulder here like hey this is uh this is a big deal what's happening to the planet right now i mean like what is your sense of what pandemics and this pandemic specifically is trying to tell us uh, one thing that uh an increasing number of people are learning but most people still don't know is that the invention of agriculture actually made the quality of life worse for people so there was this story of progress that said people lived in the jungles and their life was miserable. And as Thomas Hobbes said, it was brutish and short and, uh, and that their lives got longer and better because of agriculture and because of civilizations. And that's totally a mythology. If you study anthropology and study paleontology, you'll learn that, you know, people have anthropologists and paleontologists have dug up skeletons of ancient humans and they've been able to look at things like what's the density of their bones? How old were they when they died? Did they show signs of malnutrition? And what you find is that in hunter-gatherer societies, <clears throat> life was shorter than it is for a lot of them. It was shorter than it is right now, but it was actually longer in hunter-gatherer societies than for people who lived in agricultural societies. Part of the reason for this is that people in agricultural societies had a less diverse food supply, so there was more chronic malnutrition, partly because there would be uh, changes in weather patterns, which would cause droughts, floods, and famines, which were not an issue on small scales. And the, the key, there are two key differences that happened between hunter-gatherer societies and agriculture. One is the size of the populations. Hunter-gatherer societies were always small, low in number. And whereas once they started forming city-states, they started having higher numbers. And the second is spatial density. That hunter-gatherer tribes lived in distributed networks of extensive trade, where they might row their boats up a river to go and meet people from another tribe and do trade with them. But there was fairly low density of population across space. So there were relatively low numbers and relatively low density compared to agriculture. And after agriculture, city-states formed, these dense forms of social organization that were new, that we don't have evidence of the existing before. And so with the invention of, of dense, high population centers, one of the consequences is pandemics. Pandemics require high population density for them to spread from person to person in a viral way. So viral spread of pandemics was impossible without the invention of the city. The pandemics did not exist for humans before cities. How could they? You have a tribe of 150 people who live in a little village, and they go and trade with people in another village 20 miles away. How can a pandemic spread? The transport system and the proximity is too diffuse. So pandemics are an invention. They're a, what you might call an evolutionary mismatch of the novel environment of living in a city, which wasn't possible until the Holocene 10,000 years ago. And that's really important. So this pandemic phenomenon is new in human history. It's only about 10,000 years old. But there's another thing is to ask, well, if human lifetimes were shorter after agriculture and the quality of life was worse, when did it eventually get better? 
than hunter-gatherer times? And the answer is with the invention of science and the development of modern medicine the last roughly 300 years. So it was not civilization specifically that made lives better and health better. It was medicine, medical advances with science. And medical advances with science are a specific subset of cultural evolution within civilizations. There are many civilizations that did not create science and, and scientifically based medicine. There were a lot of theocratic author authoritarian states that uh, religious dogma would keep medical science from developing. And so it's a specific configuration of cultural evolution within a subset of civilizations that created medical science and public health and the other related things that improved health outcomes for large populations of people. But most of that happened at the time, dum -bum -bum -bum, when we started using fossil fuels, which means it has depended upon the use of ancient sunlight. It has depended upon a rare frontier of cultural development a frontier of discovering a non-renewable resource and rapidly depleting it in about 200 years and depleting it while growing in impacts as a human animal to destabilize the entire planet. So this pandemic that's happening right now is a feature of cities to have pandemics, but it's a, it's a global pandemic because of the, the, the transport networks that we've built up during the last 500 years of globalization. And that really took hold with the invention of aircraft and the development of international airports. And so the population densities and the interconnectivity between cities is unprecedented in history. So of course, a global pandemic is inevitable. And anyone who studies public health from this lens, they've known this to be the case. So this pandemic is merely a feature of the high connectivity of our highly dense human population, which is a temporary phenomenon in history. So we have to hold it in that light. And then if you say, what is Gaia telling us? Gaia is telling us that we have pursued an evolutionary dead end. And the evolutionary de dead end is a particular subset of cultural evolution of our species. And we have to remember that cultural evolution, like any other kind of evolution, is the use of culture, technology, knowledge, values, norms, mindsets, mythologies, beliefs, all these aspects of culture, using those to create niches in which our organism, humans, is able to survive. It's an evolutionary process. And like all other evolutionary processes, it thrives on diversity and the ability to select among diverse expressions. So humans have a variety of different cultures throughout our history and present in the world right now. Some of those cultures are what um, might be called future fit. They have adaptive fitness to where the world is going. And other cultures that do not have adaptive fitness to where the world is going, and those cultures are self-terminating. They're pruning themselves off of the tree of life as cultural expressions. So this globalized market economy that we have right now, we have no reason to believe, we have no historical antecedents to say that this is something that we'll be able to perpetuate. It's extremely fragile, precarious to systemic risks, and absolutely dependent on fossil fuels in its current configuration. And we run out of fossil fuels even if we burn them into the point that we destabilize the climate, which would also destabilize and collapse this whole system. So this system is self-terminating. And that's, that's the lesson. The lesson is Gaia is telling us how life forms change their environments and alter their ability to adapt to the future changes in their environments. And our lesson right now is that our globalized system is not future fit or it's unsustainable, to use more common language. And what we need to do is go back and ask which human cultures are sustainable and how do we know that they're sustainable? And where are they in the world right now? And where we'll see the future of humanity. And that's another lesson of this, is it's telling us what's not going to work. Right. And in terms of where to look to see what will work.